Hello and welcome to my revisit of Gilmore Girls, where I'll be watching another one of the show's best episodes based on recommendations in the comments of my previous videos about the show. Why? Well, back in the day when we used to watch TV, we started the show season 1 episode 1. We started somewhere in the middle and had to piece the story together through reruns, but now thanks to the internet, we don't do that anymore. So there's no more confusion, and confusion is part of the fun. At least for me it is. Now the episode I'm going to be watching today is Season 4, Episode 16, The Reigning Lorelei. So thank you to LF and Coco Gomez for recommending the episode. Now what are my predictions for this episode? My guess is there's going to be individual disputes between Grandma, Lorelai, and Rory. Emily's probably planning some sort of event, and maybe that's where her conflict with Lorelai arises. And, um, Richard is probably caught in the middle of all of it, trying to play referee. Yeah, those are my predictions. Let's find out if I'm right. Don't tell me this is what it looks like. It's escargot. Snails? Escargot. What's the difference? They taste like garlic and butter. Don't say they. Food should not have pronouns. Yep. <laughs> I'll abstain. I guess we should strike escargot off the list of Friday night dinner foods. Yes, it shouldn't have been on there in the first place. Sweetie Nelson, one of my oldest friends, she passed away yesterday. The funeral's going to be Sunday. Was that her real name, Sweetie? No, her name was Melinda. Sweetie was a nickname. Why? <laughs> You mean why? I mean, how'd they get Sweetie from Melinda? They didn't get Sweetie from Melinda. Sweetie is a nickname. Yeah. Yes, I know Sweetie was a nickname, but usually a, a nickname comes from a version of your name or there's a story behind the name or something. She was sweet. That's the story. Okay. Seemed obvious. Fine, she was sweet. They called her Sweetie. It's a good story. No, really. Exactly what kind of story about my recently departed friend would amuse you? No, it's not to amuse me. It's... All right, fine. Sweetie's father was a very poor man. Sweetie and her four siblings all had to sleep in a hollowed out tree trunk. Mm. One winter, there was no food, so Sweetie crawled out of her trunk, wrapped her feet in newspaper, and walked 40 miles in the snow to the nearest town where she stumbled into a candy store. The owner took pity on her and gave her bags of candy. Is she making this up? He promptly offered a job to her father, who gladly accepted and eventually owned that store and turned it into one of the most important candy emporiums in the world. That is how she got the name Sweetie. There, how was that? Now that was a pretty good story. Wait, that was a real story? Okay. Funeral is Sunday? Yes. Well, Mr. Hamoto is in town, and Jason has set up golf for him. What time is the service? Noon. Oh, noon, noon. That's cutting it very close. How important is it for me to be at the funeral? Uh-huh. What type of question is that? Not important at all. Well, fine then. Be sure to give them my condolences. Of course. Eat your food. <gasps> oh, my, I think one of them's still alive. Mom and daughter are matching. Hey, where's Luke? Uh, I want him to make that breakfast quesadilla thing he made yesterday. Luke's not here. Where is he? He's out there. Where? Lorelai's friend works here. Looks like a serious talk. And there have been zero light moments. And I wish I knew what they were talking about. Oh, I can tell you what they're saying. What? I read lips. My girlfriend taught me. It's so we can have quiet time and keep the conversation going at the same time. Okay. He responded just phone cords to original samovars. That doesn't make any sense. Must mean they're onto us and they've switched to some sort of code. I think Luke's heading back. He just got up and said, feel your taters. What? Or is it possible he said, I'll see, see you later? later? <laughs> this is serious. It's not plagiarism. Hey, we also like to shout fire in a crowded theater. This is a newsroom. Do not use the P word. Every single word of my piece was written by me. Was it? The P word. Small band of followers. Rain soaked highway. I've seen both of those before. The entire climate of journalistic ethics is under a microscope right now. We can't afford anything that looks shady. I'd rather not have Tobey Maguire playing me in a movie about the Yale Daily News scandal. Ooh, Spider Man. People writing their anthro papers on our computers. No one's running, no one's sweating. Every single person in this room looks extremely well rested. No one spell checks, no one fact checks. This is the breeding ground for the next Jason Blair. Now what is Jason Blair? And my month is up. What? You're the new dog to kick around here. I feel bad because you tend to be a pretty decent person, but my nose has been whacked with the newspaper so- God damn, that haircut. It's just in a bad mood, that's all. Herd mentality? Are you freaking kidding me? Welcome to the dollhouse. Dollhouse? I thought the saying was doghouse. There, it's recording. <laughs> Look at that one strut. You know you're a pretty girl, don't you? Yes, with those I need some loving eye. <laughs> They doing tricks? Sounds like they're turning them. Hello? Laura lies me. Wait, what did she just say about turning tricks? It was quite unexpected. There wasn't any warning at all. We just we just saw her. I know, it's a complete shock. Oh, how, how's dad? He's completely fallen apart. Who died? I totally just missed what they said. And he wants turtleneck soup. What's turtleneck soup? Apparently something his mother used to have made for him when he was a little boy. And now he wants some. And I can't seem to find anybody who has any idea what it is. What, his mom died? Is there ugly? Let's do this. Pretty. 
What? Dead grandmother, Michelle. Oh, okay. Your grandmother left very specific instructions on exactly how she wants her funeral to be, so I have a hundred things to do. I'll be there with the soup as soon as I can, Mom. Okay, so the event being organized is Grandma's funeral. Uh, do you need a hug? Oh, thanks, I'm okay. You'll call me when the soup's ready? I'm on it. Michelle? Yes? I think I'll take that hug now. A little weird, huh? Yeah, extremely. Oh. But never again. Thank God. All right. I got the soup. He's in his study. I have something for you. Mock turtle soup. Mock turtle soup? Yeah, Suki made it. Mock turtle soup. Mock turtle soup. Mock turtle soup. Uh. Music's nice. Oh, she loved Kay Kaiser. Well, she's great. Kay Kaiser's a man. Oh, well, his parents had an ugly sense of humor then. <laughs> <laughs> I learned everything from that woman. No one was as strong as that woman. That wonderful woman. Was she? I feel like someone else's opinions would uh, differ from yours. The last words we exchanged, we exchanged in anger. I lost my temper and I was disrespectful. And that's the way, that's the way it ended. With an argument. It always is on these TV shows, isn't it? Oh, Dad. You only have one set of parents. Remember that. I forgot. And now I have to live with that for the rest of my life. Well, you could have to. Marriage and divorce. Mom mentioned that you were talking about mock turtle soup. You really should eat something, Dad. I need a spoon. Oh my God, yes. I'll get you a spoon. Yes, I'll hold. How's he doing? He needs a spoon. Yes, he does. He's going to eat. He's going to eat. Thank God. Progress. See if you can get him to eat an apple. Not that one. And take some bread, too. How are the arrangements coming? Well, she made them 20 years ago. Where are the maids? Outrageous. They've completely ruined it. Trix's obituary. The current just faxed it through. It's disgraceful. I'll sue them. Just what? She is survived by a son, Richard Gilmore, and numerous other family members and devoted friends. That's all they write? And not a word about the new maternity wing that she donated to St. Joseph's. Okay. You tell me where all the fine people of Hartford are supposed to have all their babies. If it weren't for my mother, tell me that. All right, all right, calm down. That's easily fixed. But we'll make sure it says Saint somewhere in the article. You're sure? I yes. Don't worry, Dad. Because it's very, very wrong. Hey, Dad, I got your spoon. Well, I'm not hungry. And here I thought he'd be the calm referee. Boy, was I wrong. I have to go to Gran's house tomorrow to sort through her personal papers. Gran died. What? When? Last night, she had a heart attack. I was just getting to know her. Shouldn't I be crying? I feel like I should be crying. No, you barely know her. She was my great-grandmother. I should feel more. Oh, God, what if I don't cry at the funeral? Then everyone will see that I'm not crying, and Grandpa will be upset. Well, honey, if you can't cry, at least you know you can work yourself up into a very respectable panic attack. Am I... <laughs> Do you, do you want me to come by tonight? Pick you up, take you to Tijuana, get you drunk and laid? Huh? Another incoherent legal document. Hand it to me. We have bubble wrap those bar glasses. Where do you want us to put them? In the trunk of my car. Dashing bar glasses. Every time a certain relative of your father's comes, things tend to disappear. His cousin, Marilyn. Mm. She has been systematically pilfering those bar glasses for the last five years. Plus, I saw her eye in the candlesticks last Easter, and I'll be damned if I let her get them. So much to do. So little time. Your grandmother is to have an open casket ceremony, then is to be cremated, ashes divided in two. Half to be buried with her husband, and the other half to be put in an urn and placed on our mantelpiece. Wow. What? Grant is going to be on your mantle forever. Staring at me, judging me, disapproving of me. So apparently it's the top half. When I first found out, I... <laughs> But I've accepted it. From now on, it's going to be a three-person household, your father, me, and her urn. What was her maiden name? Gilmore. No, no, her maiden name. Gilmore. Why? You're not saying... She and Charles were second cousins. Ew, what? Oh, don't act so... Oh, what the hell? It was not at all uncommon for prominent families to keep the bloodlines close. Oh, my God. Is that what we're calling it? Well, what would you call it? Oh, I don't know. Ins? I got a mighty cute sister and an extra set of toes. No one has any extra toes. I have a double-jointed thumb. Remarkable. Use it to hand me some more papers, please. <laughs> But I don't understand how everyone was so okay with this. I mean, what did they just go? What a cute couple. They look so much alike. Yes. This is to your father. My dearest Richard, I cannot stand by and let you make a terrible mistake. Until now, I had thought, hoped, prayed that you would... Oh, against your marriage. It is my duty as your mother to beg you to reconsider your impending marriage. <gasps> I'm sure that Emily is a very suitable woman for someone. Oh... 
she will not be able to make you happy. She does not have the Gilmore stamina or spark. She is simply not a Gilmore. Boy, was she wrong. I don't know the circumstances surrounding your breakup with Pennell and Lot. I know that the timing of this is particularly awkward since you are to be married tomorrow. Damn. She wanted Dad to leave you at the altar. I'm organizing her estate and cataloging her things. I've been on the phone for days, and all this time, she never even wanted me in her family. Maybe she changed her mind. I am done. Done? I'm done planning and running around and calling people. I'm done with anything having to do with that woman. But Dad... Skipped my best friend's funeral to golf. That's what your dad did. Oh, so she was mad. Throw the old harpy's carcass in a ditch. Let a wolverine eat her. Damn, okay. Finding a Wolverine near a ditch, that takes planning. Do whatever you want. I'm gonna have a drink. Would you like a drink? Spider-Man and Wolverine. Those are some references. That letter sounds awful. So completely cruel that I'm kind of wondering if Gran didn't know Mom was gonna find it. Stop. It's too mean. I don't want to think that there's that meanness in my genes. I don't want to inherit something like that. Okay. Says the girl who has an affair. Grandpa Charles was her second cousin. No! Yes. What does that mean about us? What if that's caused, like, a horrible genetic mutation that hasn't shown up yet? Oh, it'll show up. Gran requested that she be buried in fresh clothing. And then there's the obituary. Can I do it? We have access to a database at the Yale paper that would really make it easy to research. I feel really bad for Grandpa. Well, they were really close. Yeah, we can tell. Hello? Oh. Mom? Dad? Wow, that's a lot of flowers. Uh, yeah. Where's the maid? <laughs> you got a condolence moat going on out here. She's depressed? I told Tilda to take the day off. Nothing's... Yep. All those. Just put those anywhere. I have to finish reading the Crimson Petal and the White for my book club. Silky! Wow. No one drinks water on this show. I'm so sorry, Emily. About what? Would you like a cigarette? No, thank you. Well, then, more for me. Hi, Jason. Hey, I didn't know you were going to be here. Well, this guy. Mom, where's Dad? How the hell do I know? Oh, Jason. Richard, I am, I'm so sorry to hear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't I start putting some of these baskets away? Whatever. Mom, I know how hurt you are. That letter was terrible. Yes, it was. Jason again. He had to go. Jason, your father loves that boy. I know he does. That'll change soon. You know who else would love that boy? Pennell and Lot. I'm gonna go get started on those thank you cards. Remember to thank Pennell and Lot just for being Pennell and Lot. Are we ever gonna meet this Pennell and Lot? But did you know that she took care of wounded soldiers that were shipped back here during World War II? And met three presidents. Oh, which ones? Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon. There's this amazing picture of her frowning at Nixon like she knew he was up to something. Oh. Oh. She was some kind of something, wasn't she? <sighs> yes, she could. Okay, but we don't get to see. I gotta go. Hi, Doyle. Hey, did you read the typo in the New York Times today? This is personal. Doyle. Direct defiance of what I was warning everybody about just the other day. But this is different. Oh, it is. If I can just... Oh, goody. Here comes the defense. What will it be? My grandmother is dead. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, she died two days ago, suddenly, and we were close, okay? We were close, and I'm just trying- Okay, now she's lying. Just tell the truth, goddamn. I, I didn't know. You didn't ask. Mm. My grandmother died in December, and it was still not over it. I know exactly what you're going through. Keep going, please. I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. Poor man. Last week, you know what I did? Why are you still here? Picked up the phone to call her. Isn't that sad? I actually forgot. Then, of course, it hit me all over again. She smelled a little like coffee. I still can't walk past any place that makes coffee. Oh. The girl I was dating was a barista. I had to bring... <laughs> We weren't that close. What? And it, it wasn't my grandmother. It was my great-grandmother. I dropped the great to make the whole thing sound sadder. I, I don't know anything about her uh, until today. Honesty. I'm, so I'm shocked. I'm so sorry. My grandmother was a very special woman. She drove me to my prom, and I'd be a poor man if I'd never known her. Finish the obituary. What? What? Well, everybody should get to know their grandmother. Oh, it was her great-grandmother, didn't you hear? Who asked you? What are they fighting about? Who needs to order? I do. Go ahead. I'll have the... Luke! The, the... What? Are you coming back? I'm working. We were having a discussion and you just got up and left. I thought we were done. Who's this, his ex-wife? Okay, come on. I've seen her before, but I don't remember. Okay, go ahead. We were in the middle of a conversation. We were yelling it was a fight. We weren't... Okay, so everyone's gathered by the window at this point, right? Oh. You're the one who wanted to talk. We're here. Let's talk. You don't want to talk. I don't have anything to say. Yeah, me either. Yeah, it's time we end it. Dad, 
Why are you entering the door? Oh, she's straightening her hair. Lorelai here. I just finished reading and I think you'll really like it. It's about this prostitute named Sugar in Victorian England. She starts rising through the ranks of society and she meets these really vivid characters. Okay. You might want to go get ready now. No one says we have hours. Today I learned how to make mojitos. Today especially. You might want to be early since we're the ones throwing the funeral. Fine. Throwing the funeral is crazy. I have to call the airline, make sure the Reverend got on the plane. I have to check in with the headstone. <gasps> Underwear. What? I, I delivered Grant's clothes to the funeral home, but I forgot to include underwear. Grant's going commando? Oh no, I'll have to go buy some. Oh. Yeah, wait a minute, who's gonna know? Well, I'll know, just stay here, keep an eye. <laughs> She's gonna get burned, does it matter? Do you have any idea what fresh clothing means? No. I have to do all the, all the planning now because my mother found the note. <sighs> Who writes a note like that? She doesn't know what you're talking about. And it wants to be cremated and, and put in a, in a jar uh, on top of my mother's mantelpiece to sit up there and judge for all eternity. Sounds like your mom. I'm just babbling. I'm standing in underwire heaven, just babbling like a crazy person. Yes. If she has a problem with the size or the strawberry print, then she can rise from the dead and come back here and yell at me herself. Because you know what? If anyone could, that tough, old, crazy, wonderful broad would be the one. Did we like her or not? I hear you're doing the eulogy. If you find yourself feeling unsteady about it, I can do it. I did a lot of reading about Gran for the obituary, and I think I can do her justice. She had a life, didn't she? Seems that way. I thank you for your offer, but this is my responsibility. I will be fine. I'm sure you will. Indeed. If something happens and I find myself a tad more emotional than I would like. I got your back, Grandpa. <sighs> Good job, Rory. So there she was, dragging poor Charles around Egypt, of all places. I mean, the man detested sand. So, of course, Laurel, I wanted to... Who is this? Those pyramids have been there for thousands of years so we can wait another day. And she said, you didn't marry the pyramids, you married me, and I won't wait another hour. And she jumped on a camel and rode away. <sighs> Dragged the camel's owner behind her for over a mile. Man almost died. <gasps> I'm sorry, who is this? Come here and say hello to your father's favorite cousin. Oh. Your grandmother had this picture of you right smack dab in the middle of her entryway. She would point to the picture and she would say, this is my granddaughter Lorelai. She's not married. <sighs> you are stunning. My God, tell me you're an idiot, I beg you. I <laughs> This is my daughter, Rory. It is a thrill to meet you both. Anyway, angels. When you were last over at your grandmother's house, did you possibly notice some darling little bar glass? Oh, okay, so she's the, the thief. Excuse me, please bring my husband to Manhattan and make sure the hors d'oeuvres start with him. He has to eat something. Yeah, I think philosophy may be one of my favorite subjects right now. Second cousin. Gotta go. Oh. Hi, thank you so much for coming all the way up here from Florida. I was happy to do it. Oh. Uh, and and you are... I'm Lorelai Gilmore. Uh, didn't I just bury you? No. <laughs> yeah. That was a different Lorelai. This is her granddaughter. This is the reigning Lorelai. Oh. No. Name of the episode. You remember me from when I was younger. You married me to my first husband, Theodore. I did? It will be easy on all of us if you can just pretend to remember. Oh, well, that, that, that's, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> my feet are killing me. How's the rest of you? The rest of me is fine. Oh, you know, Mom, she may have written that letter, but he picked you. Yeah. Well, let's be honest here. It seems like the exact type of behavior uh, Emily would engage in. Every five minutes, it seems, a young man would show up at my side with a tray of food. You're doing, I suppose. Could be. So I've been thinking. I'm not so sure the mantle is the best place for Grand's ashes. Makes sense. But her wishes... Being buried with my father seems right. Don't you agree? Yes. And the blizzard has her trapped in that old house for a week. The local police finally came and dug her out and handed her some hot tea, and you know what she does. First of all, she complains that the tea is too hot. <laughs> you know, someday you'll be the reigning Lorelei. I don't like that idea. Why not? Because if I'm the reigning Lorelei, then that means you'll be gone. Gone? No, not me. I'll step down way before that. I'm not gonna pull a Queen Elizabeth on you, make you wait around forever. Oh, damn. More relevant than ever. One reference that aged well. So that was Gilmore Girls. Whenever we visit the Gilmore Mansion, there's always some maids walking around. But now all of a sudden, when they're needed most, they vanish. A hundred years passed. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. 
Bye.